Uh, here I have a little five inch black and white portable television. This one's from Gone by Tandy Catalog. They used to sell them under the realistic brand in their late sort of 90s, around the 98, 99 era, I think. This one's actually a GAF model BW TV5. Pretty standard sort of model number for any five inch black and white television. One of them made in China, 3603, so I don't know if it could be made in 03, week 36 or something, but so we've got battery compartment under here. AV on the back, earphone, external antenna, that's just your normal, you get a 3.5 millimeter to standard either F or power type connector, depending on what country you're in. Vertic hole, bright and contrast, got the DC in, I've got the power pack here for it. Not sure if it's the original one, but close enough. And volume tuning, TV or radio. Now this thing was meant to be working condition. I picked it up second hand, but it turns out it isn't. It's sort of running. And I can kind of see why someone, since there's no analog signal available, they thought it was running. As you soon see, when it finally warms up, we've got a lot of ripple on the picture. I don't think I can actually get the vertical hold to fully lock in. Where's the, um... I forget how we get it to, to AV input. But I did go to AV in. Oh, that's why we just automatically plug something in. It automatically switches when you plug something in. So just plug any RCA plug in and you can see that should just be a blank raster. But instead we seem to have no vertical hold and some sort of line through the middle of the vertical. And it's almost locked in there. So maybe I mean maybe you can lock the vertical in just, but it looks like it's got a bit of fold over, so possibly a low voltage there and some ripple on the horizontal. Now if we unplug that. Looks like it's rolling again on the snow there. There's no signal here. I oh, you know that's actually just kind of locking in there, maybe. maybe a radio. That seems to be all right on radio. I've got a little dot in the middle of the screen there when I click it on quickly and off. So it just seems to be when you flick it on quickly, but sometimes these had a little bit of persistence of the EHT or whatever, which should have been clamped down, but they didn't do it. Not the best build quality usually. Rear. I think the front's going to come off by the look of it. Yeah, that's where the split in the case is. So it's starting to come. Probably just got, have we got clips at the top or do we have a little telescopic antenna? I can't see anything, any screws at the top. So maybe it's just, you just got to be careful you don't break the tube in these things because the tube tends to swing up and down as you open the front up. There's probably some sort of clip in the thing. Some of these things have a big clip there somewhere, you've got to thump them or something to get it open. Feels a lot like there's a screw up there somewhere to me, but can't see anything. So maybe it's just a clip. Unless we have to unclip this. Oh yeah, that does come off. So it's not really got much holding it on. I don't think it's going to help much if it even does come off. I reckon those side bits are clipped in some way. Maybe just got to force it out. There is a clip on that bit there and the other one, and then it should just, yep, pull out. 
Doesn't seem to reveal anything of use. But maybe there's a couple. Well, that's the clips where that's slotted in. I wonder if they... possible I guess it's under this knob oh there you go there's a start two screws there why they had so much effort to hide all the screws I'll never know but I thought I felt something over this side stopping it coming off still something at the top some sort of clip there at least everything's starting to slide apart problem is you're likely to mark the case I'm trying to get the clip open and it's always a hassle it's easy in hindsight to know how to do it yeah it's definitely something right in the middle there I don't know if I should risk shoving a screwdriver in there it's where some of those mobile phone disassembly tools would probably be a good idea now I can see something, whoops, I've marked the hell out of that. There's something right there. Which is why sometimes thumping it or something will. Maybe you've got to tilt it more. Oop, there it goes. Can't move it enough. Oh, there's a double clip there. Now again, just being careful, I'm not sure what's holding the back. This tube's now loose in there. Circuit board, oh, you've got to probably take these knobs off the side of the circuit board, I guess, so that can slide forward. Oh, that's it, that's the key. Then we've got a battery, a couple of battery wires, a speaker. Gotta be super careful you don't break those speakers off. The terminals off them when you're pulling on the wires. There's a the speaker, the antenna. Whether they all unplug, yes, they do by the look of it. Or well, at least that one does. <laughs> No, battery wire, so these are always a common problem. You should not make a note of where they go. Fairly simple in this case because the power wires, or well, battery wires, go to the power socket. And the antenna, oh, it's actually got a little label there antenna, of course, there's an antenna socket. So that would be switched by that. So not rocket science to work out where they went. But my guess is we've got something. So we've got a radio tuner board here, if I can loosen that off, and that off. Then we've just got the yoke horizontal, there's another wire to the radio. So I don't think I need the radio hooked up at the moment. And then the neck board. Now I was kind of expecting to see a faulty electrolytic capacitor or something, but nothing obvious stands out. volt 220 mic there 100 volt 4.7 well, this is the the voltage regulator so I thought that just occurred to me is this this regulated enough this power supply 220 milliamps at 12 volts I mean you can't trust it to be the correct one um, I'm not sure what sort of current these things normally drew but that could well be the problem, that we just don't have enough power out of that power pack. Now that I think about it... So I probably didn't need to pull this apart at all, in hindsight potentially. So that's the ground. You can see the pin on this. That also goes to the RCA socket, so the other one must be the positive. One of the battery terminals goes there, the other one goes there, hang on. That's the battery negative coming up there, so that might switch to there. So that's the positive, that black wire, that makes sense. And there's the, oh yeah, then the fuse. It'd be just my luck that there isn't actually anything wrong with it. Power's on, we only want 12 volts. Better get the power supply set to the right voltage. Ground can go to the RCA plug, or even that 3.5 mil would probably do. 
positive is the tip of the power thing, so I might be able to get onto that without doing anything else. And we've got the load on, what have I got no operation yet? Oh, it is running. Uh, sure enough, it's got a perfectly good raster on it. <laughs> so, should have thought of that. Never trust the power supply someone gives you. I might just flip that over so we can see it. And put my earth back on. And look at that, that's a nice little raster. So that was probably all that was wrong with that. I mean, it's got a few bands, the camera's picking up, but to me it looks absolutely fine. There's no, no band running across the screen. So there you go, so it is actually technically a working TV, it's just whatever power pack they gave me, I'm guessing, now that I look at it, 200 milliamps is not enough, or 220 milliamps, to run one of these, because I think they did pull off a bit more than that, oops, there goes my plug again, so I didn't really need to pull that apart at all. And yeah, if I'd been working on these more recently, I probably would have clicked on that straight away, but Sometimes it's not till you pull it apart that you sort of think, oh, hang on. I've been here seeing this sort of thing before. Oh, not a very easy thing to work on, that's for sure. I think I've got to that side. I've got to get this circuit board slotted back into the front. And get this radio. Maybe I should get the radio hooked up first. Pin plug there. And there's another one, there it is. At the top of the radio board. But yeah, tiny little tube, tiny little yoke. Tiny little EHT transformer there. Always on these sockets, these heat sinks, I mean, near the socket, you'll find some sort of three pin transistor there. Is the voltage regulator. They're all pretty standard inside. And gives you an idea where to start if you have any problems with similar to that, where it looks like it hasn't got enough voltage or something. So that ripple effect can be because yeah, there's a filter cap faulty and there's not enough voltage coming out of the voltage regulator or of course if the power pack itself is, is, doesn't have enough current then the voltage will drop. I probably could plug that thing in and just see what we actually had there. Ah, uh, this board, oh there we go, it just fits in. Whoops. There you go with the bench supply, not a problem. Let's um, hook up this power pack they gave me with it. I think it came on a lot quicker too with the other. Yeah, this takes quite a while to warm up and actually come up. And that's it. We're down to 7.7 .7 volts or something. So that 200 milliamp power pack, not up to the job. Pitcher's gone back to ripply edges and, and low height and stuff. So there you go. Something I should have actually clicked to immediately. But when you buy something like this, you assume it's got the right stuff with it. But the problem is, with making assumptions in life is often you're wrong. So you always got to take the human factor into account. Now the place that sold this may well have been given that. I mean for all I know while it was in the shop someone might have swapped it over and put some other one there or anything could have happened. Or some customer gave it to them, one of their customers and said, oh look, this is the power pack that goes with it, as far as I know, and of course, they don't really know. The person who owned it before probably can't remember which one it actually was that went with it. 
I've just found whatever was in the area. Oh, don't go back in. Oh, because this black cable is catching. Not the easiest thing to put back together. Something else seems to be stopping it. Oh, I bet you it's something to do with these things. Yeah, the sockets seem. Oh, there's a white wire there. That's always something like that. So, where the hell is that white wire supposed to go? Oh, maybe it's the one for the antenna. If I poke that out of the way now, I think it's this one for the battery compartment. So, it looks like you have to pull the battery compartment wires down a bit and so they sort of pull back in after the back of the circuit board. So we're nearly there. Maybe. I think I'll just get these sockets. They now we're good at making things easy, the Chinese. I guess when labour's cheap, you don't care about how long it takes to put things together. And so you get things like this that are an absolute pain. That should go back together. Oh, the bottom doesn't seem to quite slot in. Oh, did I need to push that under? Or is there another wire caught somewhere? I fear those sockets don't really line up very well. They can't be that difficult, surely. Worried about pushing too hard on this because if there's something stopping it, it's going to break. But geez, those sockets. Yeah, there you go. It's just a really tight fit. Like that shouldn't be that precision. Those clip in. I did make it, mark it a little bit there, but that's not the end of the world. And hopefully, I plugged everything back in before I put it back together. Pretty sure I did. This would have been one of the last of these little black and white TVs made, I would think. They may have come up with other designs. I think there is another little cheap one that was quite common. Different shape case to this one. But they can't have made too many designs after this and changed them or anything. I wouldn't think there wouldn't be much of a market for them. There was never a great market for them. At any stage, I don't think. Because they weren't the most useful of things. This front could really do with a bit of a clean and polish. I guess I can go back on. Whoops, that didn't sound too happy. Bit of scratching on the front of that. Certainly looks better without it. Now if I get one of those power plugs, I should be able to hook it up to the bench supply. So positive on the tip. Of course it wants to short onto the negative side. Oh well, it's still. Either one is probably gonna drop off. Yeah, it power's gonna drop off the back, of course. But clip, clip leads never stick to anything. Plug AV in, we should just get a blank raster. Yeah. I 
guess I'll put the power, the pattern generator on that. So now I've got the pattern generator on there, still got a vertical issue. And then we have a vertical hold. Hatch pattern there, see so what the brightness range and stuff is like. So the contrast is pretty up high, that's full brightness and that's full contrast. So it kind of needs to be up around that level, I think. Actually, now the, actually the focus looks ever so slightly out there. That's more like what the brightness should be, I guess. Seems a bit dim on that crosshatch pattern, and yeah, a bit dim on the... But I'm not expecting too much of this TV. There's all the bands on the, the colour bars, which are obviously monochrome bars at the moment. Or oh, stair step pattern. Seems a bit bright like that raster shouldn't... Well, one of those is actually a white raster, I think. One's, oh, one's red, so no, that's fair enough of that. I wonder why that one's so bright on the background. The dots should be as black in the background as the crosshatch and the... checkerboard. So maybe there's some sort of bad regulation to sit. It also seems a bit out of focus on those ones. But for a little cheapo set, that's about all you could really expect. It's only really useful as a little display piece now. It does have composite in, which is handy, and RF of course. If you go via one of the little antenna adapters, which I should have here. Yeah, these are the antenna adapters, like the PAL Australian type connector to a 3.5. So you can just plug that into the, well I'm going to mess up the power on this because it's in the way, but into the external antenna socket. And then we could plug like the pattern generator or something like that in there. I guess I could even try the pattern generator on RF if we remove that. And of course it did have the internal antenna which is probably both radio and TV. Let's get the pattern generator via RF and see if we can tune it in. Oh, that's already close. By the look of it. There it is. Quite a bit of patterning on that, so not the best in RF mode. Some of that could be due to the actual modulator in the pattern generator, they're not the greatest things. It usually doesn't have that patterning on it, so that could be the tuner in this thing's pretty cheap and nasty. Or maybe has an issue, the bending of the... Yeah, when you put it in, you can see the top of those squares bending over a bit, which is a sign that something's not right. It does come in reasonably well. I think that's on channel 3 or 4. That's RF, but yeah, quite a bit of patterning, not the greatest. Not as nice as when we go through AV. But that's quite a good little picture there. Uh, there's a little bit of linearity out there. I'd say the top squares are a bit higher. Yeah, you can see it on here. It's not a lot of, no not that noticeable, especially on a small screen. But same with the horizontal linearity. The square on that side is bigger than the one on this side. There's a little bit of graduation as we go across. And the top squares are a little bit bigger I think than the ones seems to be more noticeable on the checkerboard these silicon chip pattern generators aren't the greatest but they should be pretty right on that yeah definitely those squares are a bit larger They're almost more rectangular in there they're even more rectangular over that side so it's got a few geometry issues, which again, not surprising on a little cheapo set like this, probably didn't cost much. But anyway, that was a bit of a waste of time, didn't really need to pull that one to bits and check it, but it's interesting to see what's inside it anyway. Uh, thanks for watching.